You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's a big world out there, and you're just looking for a pat on the back or head. You run around the city, searching for a place to bark, working your tail off with your nose to the ground, sniffing for a few scraps, hoping someone will throw you a bone. You take each lead, collar after collar, hoping one day to take a bite out of success and become the top dog. Fortunately, you come home each day to open arms, open cans, a drink waiting for you, and a comfortable place in front of the TV set. You know you've got it good, really good, because after all, it's a doggy dog world out there. Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with your host, pet expert, and award-winning author, Liz Palaika, and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm your host, Liz Palaika, and with me today are my good friends, Petra Burke. Hello. And Kate Abbott. <laughs> from Kindred Spirits Canine <laughs> Education Center. <laughs> Kate must be unique, you know. <laughs> I know. Oh, Our last couple shows have been talking about uh, summer safety. The first show a couple weeks ago, we talked about dogs in the car, being safe in the car. And last week we talked about, oh, such wonderful things as Africanized bees and fire ants and ticks and leeches leeches and poison sumac and cactus and and all that wonderful stuff in the wild outdoors. Um, This show, we're going to take it a little farther and we're going to talk about critters, (laughs) more than just insects, but uh, porcupines, scorpions, coyotes snakes all the things that make Petra cringe (laughs) (laughs) but hold on we've got to take a minute for our sponsor hold on we'll be right back sit stay it's a doggy dog world we'll be right back after a short pause well four to be exact Pick up something unique at a Bone to Pick dog boutique. A Bone to Pick has cool hip fashions for big and small dogs that will have their tails wagging in style. Cat products too. A-B-O-N-E dash T-O dash P-I-C-K dot com. Check out our eco-friendly pet products and gifts for humans too. A-B-O-N-E dash T-O dash P-I-C-K dot com. Get your pet's mouth watering monthly with our Gourmet Treat of the Month Club. And join a Bone to Pick's free birthday club for your puppy. A-B-O-N-E dash T-O dash P-I-C-K dot com. Pick up something special for your best friend at a bone to pick. A-B-O-N-E dash T-O dash P-I-C-K dot com. Get 10% off with coupon code PETLIFE. Does your dog have problems walking with its back legs? If so, your dog is one of 58 million dogs that suffer with problems with its rear leg. Problems such as spinal myelopathy, arthritis, and hip dysplasia. Bottoms Up Leash helps your dog walk. It's a rear support harness that has won numerous awards, such as Dog Fancy's Editor's Choice Award, as Product of the Year, and it's been featured on CBS and Good Morning America. Visit the website www.seniorpetsupplies.com. School's in session on Pet Life Radio with Teacher's Pet. Learn how to communicate with your pet, train your pet, and see the world from your pet's point of view. You may even learn a few tricks yourself. Teacher's Pet, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika, and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. We're talking about critter dangers that might be a problem for your dog in the wild outdoors, whether in your backyard, out in the field near your house, or if you're out camping or traveling with your dog. One of the best things you can do is know what critters are around your area or in the area where you're traveling. When we went to the Grand Canyon, we knew that there were snakes and there were scorpions in the area. You learn to shake out your shoes before you put them on. (laughs) And if you're camping in that area, you learn to watch. Petra and I, on one of our trips to Arizona, um, 
we found the carcass of an elk calf mm -hmm. that a bear had consumed. Mm -hmm. Or I should say our dogs found the carcass of the, yeah, the elk exactly. calf. There was not mm. much left. It was... Uh, it was very bizarre for a couple of city folk. <laughs> yep. So well, they're bear in that forest. <laughs> and then so we, we kept our dogs real close. And then we saw the tracks <laughs> yeah. in the dirt. And that bear track was bigger than a cereal bowl. Oh, yeah. That was huge. As we start looking around, like, okay, we let's were, just kind of keep close here. We were watching over <laughs> our shoulders. <laughs> Every time we heard a stick crackle and the dog stepped on something, we jumped. <laughs> Luckily, he was gone, and he had a very full tummy. <laughs> yeah. But you need to know what predators in your area. Uh, mountain lions, cougars, and in this area. Um, bobcats. Bobcats. Coyotes. Well, even mountain lions, has been two sightings. Sure. And the more that we here. build, especially here in Southern California, and encroach upon their area, the more contact we start coming in with them. Mm -hmm. And they would think nothing of taking off. With your small Pomeranian. Oh, gosh, no. A bit. The other thing uh, that we have here in San Diego County is we've had all the wildfires, and that's uh, removed living habitat. That's taken out some of the prey animals. There were a lot of prey animals, deer, killed by the fires. Yeah. Water sources. And so when it's very, very dry, they're coming close to where we irrigate to have water to drink. They're coming close to where we irrigate because that's where the rabbits are yep. in the green grass. Yep. And so there's food and water where people are. Coyotes, Coyotes. especially are very good oh, at adapting to human habitation. I mean, they're getting to a point where they're a nuisance. There's a senior citizens community of, of very active seniors in their own homes and condos, um, all within one community. And they were having quite the problem with coyotes. A lot of them have small pup puppy dogs. Oh, yeah. Small dogs. That's right. And they had coyotes that were actually following the dogs in through doggy doors, coming into the garages. Oh, the dogs. oh, oh. Well, yeah, they're, not, they're not afraid of people right. like they were in the past. They've no. learned to live with us. I mean, you can mm -hmm. try to shoo them away, and they just look at you like talking to me. Well, other <laughs> than know. the one you and I scared Well, away. you know. <laughs> You and I that day would have scared anything away. Just we, seen us go charge it after that coyote. We had a coyote come up into our training yard and Petra and I without while, while class was in session. While class was in session and without even looking at each other and consulting, we no. both put our arms up in the air, screamed and ran at it Charged side it. by side. <laughs> Our, oh our dogs stayed back with the class. Yeah, you know, that's right. <laughs> and then the class looked at us like we were absolutely nuts. <laughs> but that coyote was gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, that's not necessarily the approach to take with some. <laughs> no. But I think even a mountain lion would run from that. <laughs> I remember Ludwig. He's a full-size German shit. What, 115 pounds oh, sure. or so? Um, charging a coyote. And that coyote just stood there and looked at him like, oh, yeah. But the coyote was fence-wise. Sure. Uh, the yeah. other thing you have to be careful of with many predators, including um, coyotes, but also wolves, mountain lions, is that one animal will often act as a lure mm -hmm. to lure the dog or the cat away, primarily the dog. He'll show himself. The dog will chase the coyote will move away, and then once they've gotten a little distance in, the rest of the pack comes in. Or in a mountain lion's case, the cubs will come in, and then they will all take down the dog. And although that sounds horribly cruel to us, you know, it's our treasured pet. It is survival of the fit, and it's the natural way. So we've got to protect our dogs in, in cases like that. Predators teaching them a really good recall or keeping them on leash when you're out hiking and being aware if you're in Even a on leash be aware because they can come up and take right from your leash sure right out of your hands you've you've got to be aware of the habitat that you're in I know in most of the local parks if the rangers are seeing predators they put up signs and notices that mountain lions have been seen in the area that wolves have been seen in the area. Uh, when we camp up in the Sierra Nevada mountains, if the bears are active, they'll put signs up. The bears have been coming into the campgrounds. Sometimes it, they'll forbid the dogs 
at -hmm. those times because the bears don't like dogs. (laughs) I remember one time my husband and I were camping up in the Sierra Nevadas with my parents and my sister, who was much younger, and a bear came up to our campground and up to our porch of the cabin we were staying in. My mother and our 110-pound German Shepherd dashed for the cabin. (laughs) <laughs> and my mother locked the door behind her, leaving the rest of us outside. <laughs> so the German Shepherd and my mother are in the cabin with a locked door. My sister, my husband, my father, myself are outside with the bear. <laughs> and she did not unlock the door. And the German Shepherd was in there going, Err. <laughs> Wonderful, loyal dog protecting my mother. <laughs> and then the cat. <laughs> so, but actually, that's probably the good thing because then the rest of us sh- shooed the bear away before we proceeded to hassle my mother for the rest of the camping trip. <laughs> so, you've got to know the predators in your area. Now, another one that we see all over the place poisonous snakes. Oh, gosh. Rattlesnakes, from what we're hearing more and more in the news, is um, they're becoming, I guess they're out there. I Thank God, knock on wood, I have not had them on our property, but we've got king snakes and gopher snakes. Hey, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the rattlers away. I'm fine with it. Um, the venom's the becoming venomous. more toxic. Yeah. Yep. So one of the things that we do to help our dogs as we um, take them through and we hold it here at Kindred Spirits is the Rattlesnake Avoidance Clinic. And we've heard, besides our dogs reacting appropriately, like as in not going towards the snake or saying, hey, a new toy, let's play. Um, but we've heard a lot of success stories with other uh, clients have come through. And I just love the one with the lady in the golden retriever. She's trying to shove her dog out on the patio. The dog's doing a death grip when I'm not going outside this house. But the lady couldn't figure it out until she steps out on the patio and realizes there was a coiled rattler sitting there on the patio. For search and rescue training, the theme is trust your dog. If your dog is telling you something, trust him and listen to him. That golden retriever was telling his mom, Mom, there's danger out there, and she was ignoring him. She's lucky she didn't get bit. Oh, yeah. Well, Very you have lucky. To remember that dog. He's not one of the smartest dogs that ever came down the pike. But in that case, he was <laughs> yeah. right. Yes. He was listening to his training. Yes. 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 I, I had a good uh, proof of that. Petra and I and my husband do reptile rescue work also. And just recently, uh, we took in a rescued red-tailed boa. Oh, yeah, the one that I had to drive up from San Diego with in the back of my seat. (laughs) Hoping he wouldn't come out of his crate while I'm driving. (laughs) And Petra's phobic about snakes, by the way. So anyway, once Petra drove him up, my husband and I took him. Was this just a regular dog crate? Yes. Yes. With just a mesh front grate uh-huh. yes. that a snake could wiggle on through? No, he was no, too was big, big for that. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> he was big. I haven't heard about this. I'm just he's, it, it, was a cat, it was a cat crate, and he's about seven foot, so he couldn't fit through the grill. You sure? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wasn't. That's and I was you kept telling Petra. <laughs> Let's just say I made sure she realized I'm a very, 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 very good friend to transport the <laughs> snake in the backseat of my Well, car. the poor snake had been mistreated and... Whatever. Somebody had <laughs> stabbed him, the poor yeah. thing. Oh. Oh, he has several yeah. wounds, a poor thing. So anyway, my husband and I took in this snake and put him in a, in a, a nice-sized cage in the living room. Well, our dogs are used to the reptiles that are already in the cages, but this was a new one. And Bashir, my four-year-old dog, who's been through snake avoidance training, and the instructor for that training says that they're taught to react to rattlesnakes specifically. Well, Bashir generalized, and he saw this new snake in the living room, in the cage, moving around in the cage, and when he saw it, I heard this deep, rumble in his chest well much deeper than that <laughs> See, that sounds deep, like a pomeranian deep, growl deep, <laughs> deep, yeah there you go really really deep <laughs> growl in his chest I mean this was serious and he's staring at that snake and the snake's moving and of course I'm sitting on the sofa trying not to laugh well our older Aussie bouncing around the house what 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 are you growling at 
He looked up at one of the cats. Nope, can't be that. He looked out the front door. Nope, nobody out there. What are you laughing? What are you growling at? What are you? He was frantic. What's the problem? Finally, and I was kind of impressed, he lined himself up with Bashir, looked over Bashir's shoulder to see what Bashir was looking at. He saw the snake and went, oh, jeez, that's not a rattlesnake, and went lay down. <laughs> With a disgusted look, I hope. Yes, very disgusted. What's all the excitement about? That's not a rattlesnake. But Bashir made sure I knew there was a moving snake in the living room. <laughs> well, and I think a good example how well the dogs took to it and understood the technique with the avoidance was when all three of us, you know, to this day you just want to put a dunce cap and all three of us go, Duh. Yeah. <laughs> When we took, we had, what, three of our dogs with us, went to a gas station that for some odd reason had a, it really did sound like a rattlesnake underneath some little cover. It was a metal plate that was vibrating in the ground. But it sounded, must have been the pump or something. But it sounded very much as a, as a rattler. And all we can think of is, oh, you silly dogs, it's a plate on the ground, and we're tugging and hauling and trying to push them to it until, was it Kate? You said it. Said, wait, and stop. One of us said, wait a minute. It sounds it's like so a rattlesnake. Yeah. <laughs> so we went from trainers, we will help our dogs overcome their fears, <laughs> yes. to good dogs, <laughs> let's all run away together. <laughs> <laughs> and then we yes. bemoaned how stupid we were <laughs> yes. oh my for, God. again, not oh. trusting our dogs. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and it wasn't just one of them. They all reacted the same way. We all reacted the same way. Come on, dogs, you gotta leave this. It was <laughs> Logan that had been three feet off the ground. Yeah, oh, Logan. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Really yeah. But all, all of them were were stressed. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Trust so your dog. So if uh, if you belong to a dog training club or you're a dog trainer and you want to host a rattlesnake aversion training clinic, we'll give a free commercial here to. Patrick Callahan. He's been doing it for more than 20 years, and he's got a website. You can uh, just Google or search for Patrick Callahan Enterprises. He sometimes has a waiting list for clinics. It took us a couple years to get a clinic set up here. This is our third year doing it, and the people who've gone through the clinic and our students are thrilled, and we, we think it's a wonderful community service. So check well, that out if you want And to. it saves your dog. I mean, you know, spend 7000 plus in trying and hoping your dog pulls through after a rattlesnake bite or whatever the fee is um, for the, the clinic and just right. take that and it's a, it's under $100. Prevention is always cheaper than always treatment. Always cheaper, exactly. Sure. Now, let's, let's talk about another critter. Now, I haven't had too much experience with this one. Porcupines. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We're found back on the East Coast. Sure. I mean, in um, Oregon, we came across them with their dogs. Okay. Yeah. And Did you ever get one get quilled? No, because they you know that, again, the trainer, leave it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Man, those things have big quills, and they can be really big animals. I was really surprised. You see them on TV, you see them whatever, but when you're up and close, you look... Know, I was impressed how huge those things are. <laughs> and contrary to Disney movies, they don't shoot them from feet away. But no. they're much like the jumping cactus. They release easily. Mm-hmm. And uh, when the porcupine gets alerted or excited or they stand defensive, up. they can make those quill stand up straight very so that cool they can looking. really go in. They can also whop yeah. with the tail. Yeah, they know that. Really so if the dog gets too close, they can take that tail, which isn't really long, but it's also got quills on it, Mm -hmm. and whop the dog with the tail, and that can embed a good dozen or two dozen quills in the dog. So, and quills, quills like foxtails only move one direction. Mm -hmm. Like foxtails, they're barbed, and so um, they move in. I have seen when I was worked as a vet tech, um, a dog came in with a muzzle full of quills. I don't know where they had gone. They'd been camping, I believe, or hiking, and came back with a muzzle full of quills. The guy had tried to pull some out himself, but it caused the dog so much pain that he left the dog as is to get back to the veterinarian. And uh, we had to anesthetize the dog. And then I think there were four of us working on that poor dog, pulling quills out of his muzzle, his lips, his tongue, mm. his ears. It did miss his eyes, thankfully, but all over his face and head. Oh, that poor dog. I felt so bad for him. 
But it's uh, hard to do it alone without anesthesia. Oh well, they're painful. They're so painful, and I think they're unless they're in a dangerous position like the eyes. In most cases, you're better off. We've all got cell phones now. Call a local veterinarian. Call your exactly. veterinarian. Get some recommendations, and then yeah. get him to the vet right away. Yeah. But boy, teaching the dog that leave it is a good command. Yeah. Nice so time. we've got to take a break for our sponsors. So hold on real quick. We'll be right back. Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in paparazzi, candid pictures of you and your pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No, to my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. world. Fluff your feathers, roll out your tongue, shine your fins, snap on your leashes, and grab your human. It's the Louisville Pet Lovers Expo. Two full days of pet-tastic fun that no pet lover should miss. Join us for shopping, the Barks and Couture Fashion Show, Dream Pet Wedding, Ultimate Pet Makeover, Pet Communicator, Rescue Me Pet Adoption, Service Dog Demonstration, and tons of fun contests. Bring your pets and join us at the Louisville Pet Lovers Expo, Saturday, September 27th, and Sunday, September September 28th at the Kentucky Expo Center. For more information, go to LouisvillePetExpo.com. When you're looking to add a pet into your life, consider adopting a homeless animal from your local shelter or rescue group. Whether you want a kitten, puppy, or a more mature pet, a purebred or a one-of-a-kind mixed breed, even a rabbit or hamster, your shelter has the best selection of animals anywhere, all screened for good health and behavior. PetLifeRadio.com presents Take Me Home with your host, Susan Daffron. Join us each week as we showcase wonderful pets, tell stories, and even throw some pet education into the mix. So get ready to find out why the pet adoption option can be a great way to add a furry companion into your life. Take me home every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. We're talking about uh, predators, porcupines, other animals that can be a danger to your dog. Not just in your backyard or in your local community, but if you're out uh, camping, traveling, Years ago, Petra and I took a trip. We had four dogs with us, and we drove from San Diego to Michigan, Michigan. <laughs> for the Australian Shepherd National Specialty Dog Show. And we went through some territory. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Uh, the dogs saw all kinds of critters, and we had two puppies with us yeah. at the time. Uh-huh. Two, two grown-up extremely well-trained dogs, Ursa and, and Shasta. And two puppies. And then two puppies. <laughs> two idiot puppies. <laughs> yeah, They were very smart puppies, but they, they were at the idiot puppy stage. <laughs> I'm amazed we got back safely. <laughs> Me too. With all four dogs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, we, we traveled all over. But one of the things we did before we went is we 
we got the AAA guide, we got the tour guides, we got all kinds of information um, from the places we were staying to try and keep the dogs safe. Exactly. I think we even talked to some locals, just trying right? to get an idea of what's in the area, what to watch out for. Oh, that campgrounds in Michigan. That was gorgeous, where we took the dogs oh, to run. Oh, my gosh, yeah. That camp? Yes. Yeah. 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 There was poison ivy there. I remember that distinctly. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I think one of the most common, uh, it, you find these little lovely little critters everywhere, is the skunk. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Do you know, knock, knock, on, knock on wood, um, in all the years I've owned dogs, knock on wood. Yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> Have not been sprayed. I, I, I have not had a dog sprayed. Neither have I. Knock on wood. <laughs> Some more. <laughs> now, when I was working at the veterinary hospital, we had dogs come in that had been sprayed. Oh, we hated that. Oh, my God. We hated that. <gasps> so I have to admit, I have this little soft spot for skunk. Maybe it's Peppy Le Pew cartoons. Maybe it was my first... When I was a kid, my parents and had friends in New Hampshire that had pet skunks living in the house. Well, my uncle, my mother's brother, had a pet skunk that lived in his closet. And I don't have fond memories of that. That was the grumpiest, fattest, nastiest. He was descended, but he wasn't fun. Neither I had, flower I had good nor ones. spats was descended. Oh, really? Deboxed. Yeah. And yet they never wow. sprayed. Yeah. And they were so, they look so big, and you pick them up, and there's nothing in, they're like your Pomeranian. All it's fur and nothing. Fur. Yeah. Oh, no, my uncle's was. Your little nose and cute little feet. My uncle's they're very was cute, because I got to know a person like that, too. <laughs> very nice. And I, I've seen them actually at my home right here, up, uh, out in my front yard. But if you just sort of talk to them gently, watch for the little. From feet, feet stand. right? Oh yeah, that's the warning. Uh-huh. That's the I've had enough of you. But other than that, you just talk to them and they move on along. Well, luckily I haven't had any run-ins <laughs> with them because I don't have fond memories of them. My <laughs> uncle Jerry Skunk was nasty, you and he didn't Liz. like us kids. You see, Liz, she goes, I am not going to be talking to a Skunk either. <laughs> <laughs> and in honor of Peppy Le Pew, though, okay. Right. <laughs> so, what do you do if your your dog is sprayed? Don't hug him, for one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him run through the house. I've been lucky, yeah, I've been lucky enough not to have a dog being sprayed, too. But um, there's all sorts of recipes on the Internet. The one that a bunch of people were agreeing upon had to do with Dawn dishwashing soap and baking soda. Um, well, Dawn, Dawn and Joy dishwashing soap are both the best at cutting grease or oil. So and I and know it's an the oil base. it's an oil based spray. Right. It's a musk gland. Mm-hmm. So I I would bet that Don or Joy both would be extremely the, good at cutting the oil. Those members of the internet group I was chatting with that are back that have hunting tracking dogs. Uh, they were downplaying the tomato juice, which I've always heard, but and were up playing the baking soda and dishwashing soap. Ah. Uh, then there's the commercial products I've heard about the Nature's Miracle. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I personally, thankfully, knock on wood some more, <laughs> don't have personal experience with any of those. But uh, uh, first of all, it's going to take more than one bath, yeah. no matter what you use. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, during if you that... can't do it outside, not in the house, because that smell just gets oh. into your everything, your carpet, your, your smell just yeah. penetrates everything. And, and when your dog gets wet for the next six months until he sheds out that hair coat, <laughs> yeah. the scent will come back. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> I remember one dog we had would come in for grooming and uh, he smelled great when he was dry, but each time he got a bath, you could smell it still until he finally shed out that coat. Oh man. I, I, I felt for his owners. <laughs> It was a German Shepherd. Primarily an annoyance, and <laughs> unless it gets directly in the eyes, it's not like likely to hurt the dog. Sure, hurt his feelings as you kick him out of the house for a while. But, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there's some other problems we ought to talk about as far as uh, wildlife too, and that's rabies. Rabies uh, can be a reoccurring problem on the East Coast. I know when my husband and I were back there, there was problems with rabid raccoons and rabid skunks. Um, out here on the West Coast, and I believe in the Southern Midwest, there's been a problem with rabid bats. And ground squirrels. And rabid ground squirrels. Um, 
talk to your veterinarian about the rabies vaccinations. The, uh, the interval for boosters is changing as we learn more about vaccines themselves and how the body's reacting to them. I'm not gonna tell you how often you should have that vaccine, but definitely talk to your veterinarian. And if there's uh, rabid animals or the potential of rabid animals in your area, definitely teach your dog the leave it command. And if you haven't, or you don't know how to teach it, talk to a trainer in your area and teach it because that can certainly come into play. My favorite time for using the Leave It um, was, again, one of our trips, walking around the motel early in the morning with the dogs, letting them do their morning business, and finding a squirrel in the throes of poison death. Yes, which was horrible. Beautiful gray squirrel. Oh, he was gorgeous, but he was dying. And, of course, that attracted the dog's attention immediately because he was thrashing and squeaking. And Kate and I, I think, simultaneously, ah, leave it. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe we had four dogs with us at the moment, and they all backed up. And, you know, that could have potentially saved their life. So in this area where people, I mean, in any area where people are putting out poison for rats, squirrels, whatever, make sure your dog doesn't get part of that poison food chain. Oh, definitely, because secondary poisoning is just as deadly. Yeah. We had another case of uh, yesterday. Yeah. Squirrel got hit by a car in our training yard. And, uh, of course, I think it had been dead several days, and that was quite attractive to the dogs. And, again, leave it and back well, them off. At least you knew that it had been hit by a car. I thought it had been poisoned. Oh, oh uh, no. Because it was on yeah. the road. Yeah, yeah, I had seen it on yeah. the road. Okay. Yeah. So I just I was willing to leave it on the road. Obviously, somebody threw it over our fence. <laughs> Yeah, here's a new pet. Thanks. Okay, the really worst part about it is Liz stuffed it into a hole that wasn't big enough for it and left his little tail hanging out and then put a log over it and it was like... Mark, edit that. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up. Edit that out, Mark. All right. Fine. All right. Just because of that, let's let's talk about some other creepies. How about Spiders. Spiders. Oh, don't be looking at me. Cause I'm like, oh, <laughs> Spiders look the best under my shoe. Ah, How can you tell if they have little red hourglasses on their tummies? I really don't give a darn. <laughs> I know they serve a purpose. I understand, you know. And <laughs> No, they still look better under my shoe. Obviously, you didn't read Charlotte's Web often enough as a child. I want, no. <laughs> no. I would have swooshed that spider still. <laughs> Dogs don't get bit by spiders too often, but uh, it does happen. There's a lot of black widows in this area. We find them all over the place. Yes, those too. <laughs> nice big black mamas uh -huh. with uh, red hourglasses on their tummies and the little bitty males swarming all over the place. Yep, yep. We also have uh, the trapdoor spiders that make the big web in the ground with the hole that the bug goes down and they catch it. We so, have that in our yard, and we were playing with one the other day. That yeah. kind of cool. Then I smashed it. And then you... And it looked good under my shoe. <laughs> the dog sticks a nose down there. <laughs> Poor spiders. Dog I'm sticks protecting a... my dog. First it entertained her, and then she <laughs> You. I know I'm sorry, but <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, and some of these are poisonous. And I don't need well, them. black widows and trapdoor spiders, both are venomous. Yeah. If you suspect your dog has been bitten by a spider, he needs immediate veterinary care. Black widows, spider can kill a dog mm -hmm. easily or, or cause him tremendous harm. The brown recluse can kill a dog, uh, even a large dog. Or, or cause... Or do harm to a human. Oh, definitely. Well, both of those can kill people, mm -hmm. too. The trapdoor spider is not quite as venomous, but he can still, especially if the dog sticks his nose down that trapdoor and gets bitter on the, on the nose. Spider bites usually cause swelling, redness, heat at the bite site, tremendous pain. I luckily, knock on wood some more, have not been bitten by a, a black widow, but I understand they're very, very painful. And um, and the poison moves through the system very quickly, so the dog needs immediate veterinary care. So, unfortunately, the wild world... We must be living right. All this camping we do, and we have a, I've never been bit. 
I know. Or I mean, all stuff that we spoon. talk about. Well, Knock you know. on wood some more. <laughs> <laughs> My well, knuckles are getting sore. <laughs> but I think we're just, we're aware of it. You know, you, you look around. We take care when we're out and about. And yeah. I think that's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Look out for your dog. We, we still enjoy it. We go out. We're still camping. We still do our girls trips. You sure. Know, and I we're just cautious. I remember being amazed, even here at the training field, but also on camping. Your, your little pump. You know, talking about Keely, your Pomeranian, it's like the whole world is out to eat her. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, she only weighs seven pounds. But look, you know, all of a sudden Liz was going, where's Keely? Where's Keely? And you're like, she's over there under Teddy's belly. Well, there was a hawk. Oh, yeah. Circling the field. Uh-huh. And actually, I she's guess Keely had learned to get underneath the German Shepherd's belly. Mm-hmm. Sure. So as not to be carried off. And she yep. does it at home because, again, we've got... I guess a pair of hawks around there and we hear them every time we're outside and I'm always like, where is she? And she's either under a tree, under the car, someplace where you can't see her from up above. Sure. Well, we're running out of time. As with the previous two shows, our whole idea is to educate you so you're aware of the dangers around for you and for your dog. Just be aware. Ask questions. Check with local veterinarians. Check with uh, uh, people in the region, especially if you're traveling or camping. And just be safe. You, you can have a good time. And you don't need to live in a bubble. You don't no. need to just keep your dog in your backyard or not take it out. We do. Our I mean, dogs go do everywhere do? with us. We do a lot our, with our, our dogs. Our dogs have been to Big Sur, the Redwoods, to the beaches, to the Grand Canyon, to the hills of Arizona, the beaches of Southern California. Take some time to prepare. I do wish I had prepared many years ago when I took some dogs to hiking in a local area. Um, and what I hadn't checked on and what didn't realize is that the mountain was made of pumice. So oh, the trails, tear up their feet. The trails were made of ground up pumice. Yeah. After about two hours of walking, I had to carry the dogs out. Yeah. Because yeah. their pads tear, were so swollen. Tear yeah. up their feet. Yeah. So there's something unique to each area. Find okay. out ahead yeah. of time and be prepared. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for us today. Thanks for listening to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm Liz. We'll see you in the next show. See you later. Bye-bye. Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.